Welcome back. This is the next part of how to set up a freshwater aquarium. Today we're going to talk about filters. Now, the three main things that your filter should address, at least uh, one of the three, is going to be mechanical filtration, chemical filtration, and biological filtration. There are a few main types, at least the three main categories that you can get are going to be your hang on back filters, your canister filters, and your sponge filters. Now, there are a few more. There are a few other ones that you can get, but these are going to be your three main ones that you have for your tank. So let's take a look at the first one, which is going to be sponge filters. Now, the first one I want to talk about here is the sponge filter. Sponge filters are nice. They're usually pretty affordable. And they rely on an air line running through the center here, and an air stone or air bubbles coming up and out one end of the, the filter. And as that air goes up and moves, it'll actually draw water in and flow it through the filter. But not so much that it's going to be a hindrance to you. And by that, I mean a lot of times breeders will use this or people with small fry. They'll fry a little baby fish. Since there's not a lot of vacuum going through these, little fish can swim up and have clean water without getting stuck or uh, sucked up into the filter. You know, you lose some fish that way. So they're great. They're pretty efficient. Um, they're a lot cheaper than the other styles of filters you can get, but for their price, they're, they're great to have, especially if you're looking to breed fish or keep uh, raising some, some small fry. Alright, so now the next filter that we're going to go on to is the hang on back filter. They are pretty affordable. They range in prices everywhere from $10 to well over $200, depending on the model you want to get. The way they work, is they're driven by an, an impeller inside the unit with a, mag a magnet around it. So as the impeller turns, it'll draw water up the spout here and then force it through filtered cartridges up top. Now, some of them have two, some of them have one. It really all depends on which one you get. But as the water floods the back here, it'll go through a coarse pad, then a pad with uh, activated car uh, charcoal, and then finally finish through a biological pad here in the front. So. The coarse pad will filter out all the uh, large particles, the large detritus that your tank creates. The chemical will be great for your first couple of weeks as you run the nitrogen cycle. But after that, it usually expires and they say to replace them every couple of weeks. But honestly, if you have a strong seeded filter with a lot of biological buildup, you're not going to really need to. I rinse mine out every now and then just to kind of keep them clear and keep the water flow nice. So water comes up, gets the coarse stuff, and the fine stuff goes through the carbon, which will work with the water chemistry. And then whatever fine particular matter is left will get stuck on the biological pad, and in turn it will feed nitrifying bacteria, which will send it back into the water crystal clear. Now they allow for great surface agitation and water movement on the top, but that's where they kind of get limited. They do more of like the top area, and then come down and then go through the bottom versus something like this where you can direct the flow and they take up a lot of retail on your actual tank itself. So if you can live with those then it's going to be a great filter for you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of other different types you can go with but you can really kind of get the one that's going to be best suited for your tank. Alright so now we're going to move on to my personal favorite type of filter and that's a canister filter. Now these are going to be more freshwater based filters because the saltwater guys have their own setups going on, but this is great. The way it works is the same concept of this as where an impeller is driving a, a water current through one of the spouts down into the filter and then back up the spout and you can direct the flow from the top or adjust it if, as need be. Now this is the filter we're going to go with the, just, uh, this video series tank and that's the Eheim Eco Pro. 2236. They sent me this for a video contest and it's a great filter. As the water enters the filter, again same principle where it'll get filtered out uh, mechanically and then go into a chemical stage with activated carbon and then finally finish out with a biological stage which is going to have a lot of uh, ceramic rings or biological load in there which will attend, in turn do most of the actual filtration before it sends it back onto the tank. These don't require a lot of maintenance usually. The capacity these are rated for are generally going to be a little bit more than you'll find with these. And they add extra tank volume 
to the actual tank itself. So if this is this is a 29 gallon and this holds about a gallon of water, we'll bump it out to a solid 30 gallons of water that this tank will actually have. As you can see with this stand, since it's rated for this fish tank, I have cutouts in the back where I can hide the filter and have very, very slim uh, <clears throat> slim fittings in the tank so you don't really get that big obstruction like you would with this. They are a bit more pricey and they range everywhere from about $50 to I've seen them go for $1,000 and those are the big stainless steel ADA ones that they sell in Japan. Now there are a few more types of filters that I want to touch on and those are going to be pretty much not the types you usually see on these tanks. Now the other types of filters that I want to touch on that you don't really see in the industry anymore are going to be under gravel filters which are like plastic grates that go on here and it's kind of like the concept of a sponge filter where you have air pumps or power heads running through tubes drawing in water to the substrate and in turn going through the grate and then turning around and coming out through tubes on whichever side they're, they're, they're set in. The reason you don't see these anymore is because a lot of times they get clogged or they're pretty inefficient to draw water in through them and you get all that detritus kind of sitting at the bottom versus getting pulled out and brought to a filter pad or something you can take out and remove from the tank. So you get a lot more biological load and a lot of times the way that works isn't always the best. The other type is sumps. Sumps are nice but they're a bit more for the advanced aquarist. And what that's going to be is the concept of a uh, canister filter where water will get pulled out, brought down to another tank below similar to something like this. Water will come in and go through its stages of filtration, maybe a refugium with live java moss or something, and you'll be able to increase your tank volume and filter out a lot more water more efficiently. But again, it's going to take some know-how. It's going to usually be more for the advanced guys. And with fresh water, when you're doing plants and all that, those are usually going to do a lot of your filtration as well. So. Some isn't generally necessary, but you can use them. You can even use them to help quarantine fish that you bring into your system. And, you know, they, they can be used, but they're not generally uh, one of the first ones that people think of to, to put on a freshwater tank. Now, after we've gone over the filtration systems that I've explained to you and how they work, you know, biological, uh, it's going to be the bio balls, bio ceramics that hold all the bacteria and will help convert all the water or mechanical, like you saw with the sponge filter. This is actually the tank we're setting up for this video. This is a 29 gallon tank with matching stand. And since I won the Eco Pro filter from Eheim, I was really looking forward to that because that is the actual filter I want to use for this tank anyways. It's rated for up to 75, 80 gallons. And that's gonna filter out this 30 gallon, like three, six, nine, solid three, four times an hour. Plus, I'll throw in some power heads in here. When you're looking at how big of a filter you should get for your tank, I find that it's generally best to over filter than to under filter. And that's going to allow better water circulation. It's going to allow for a cleaner tank. And if you under filter it, you might get some stagnant water or really not utilize all the tools at hand to uh, maintain your, your tank clear. You can get them rated for the tank, but like I said, if you have a choice, over filter rather than under filter, keeping in mind not to create like a typhoon vortex in your tank or something. So yeah, we're going to use this Eheim Eco Pro. I haven't actually set it up yet. I mean, I have all the stuff together. I'm actually going to set it up right now. I'm just going to hook it up to my other tank that's already established. And all that established water will help seed the biological load in there. And so when it comes time to putting this together, the filter will be mature, I have mature water on hand, and it'll cut down the nitrogen cycle dramatically. 